In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily access over 500 MCP servers, and it is super easy to connect to your existing workflow. It'll work on ChatGPT, Cloud Desktop, Cursor, VS Code, Cloud Code, anything that has an MCP URL, WhatsApp, and more. As always, I have a link in the description below, but today's app is called ruby.app and we are going to sign in. When you sign in, you're going to see a page like this. We can click marketplace on the left side. And now we have access to literally over 500 different tools. You can go by category. So say we want something in file management or maybe we want productivity. We can connect ChatGPT now to Notion or Google Sheets and we can have it work with these things. So let's go back to featured for a second. We're going to enable Gmail. I'm going to show you right now how you can get ChatGPT to work with Gmail. So we're going to hit enable app and you can see here we can connect it or we can say, hey, I want to use my own developer app. So we're going to hit the top option, it's the easiest, and we can decide what scopes we want our Gmail to use. So we can hit setup. It is then going to ask our permission for access to our Gmail. So we want it to be able to read and compose messages. We have to enable this. Do we want it to see the downloaded content or language preferences? We can decide what we want to show to our MCP server here. So we have it read and compose and send emails. We can hit continue. Now our Gmail is ready to integrate into all these different services. So, so now we are going to click this button here and now we can select a platform. So say we want ChatGPT, we can do this in developer mode, which I'm gonna show you in just a sec, or we can go to a custom GPT and start talking to the custom GPT, connect Ruby, and then we can talk to the GPT to talk to Gmail. But let's go to developer mode and I'm gonna take you through the process now and it's really easy to do. We're on ChatGPT, we're going to click our name, go to settings, and then you're going to go to connectors. Now you're on connectors, you're going to scroll down until you get to advanced settings. We're going to enable developer mode. If you haven't enabled, you can go back. You're going to see a create button here, so we can click that. We're going to see a screen that looks like this, so we can have an icon for it. We can give it a name. So maybe we want to just call it Ruby. For the MCP server URL, we're going to put this URL here. Now we're going to leave it on OAuth and we can say, I trust this application. We're going to hit create. If you have not signed in before, it's going to ask you to sign into your Ruby account. Once you do that, this screen is going to pop up. It's going to say, hey, do you want to allow access? We can say yes. We're going to click our organization. We want to connect. Now we're being redirected back to ChatGPT where you can see Ruby is now connected. Now let's come back to our main page. We can hit the plus and if we go down to more, we can see developer mode. Under developer mode, we can go to Ruby. We can enable it. We're going to disable Superbase for a second. So we have Ruby enabled, and now we can actually talk to Ruby about our Gmail because it has access to it. Can you tell me if any email is in my spam folder? You can see here it's looking for available tools. It found it. Now it's calling the Ruby tool. It's searching the email, and it is now able to look through my Gmail, and it's going to come back with an answer for me. We're going to get a screen that looks like this, where it's going to say, hey, we want to look at read only and we want to fetch the messages in your Gmail. We're going to just hit remember this for this conversation. We're going to hit confirm. We just have to do this once. And then the remainder of our conversation with Gmail through Ruby on ChatGPT, it has the ability to just keep talking to us about our email. We don't have to confirm any further. It says the short answer is yes, you've got spam. It gives us a snapshot of what is in there in our spam folder. It says there's 34 messages and it even shows what the last date of a spam email was. What is really cool is we can unspam specific threads, we can create filters, so legit partners don't go into spam, or we can just bulk delete. So we can say, hey, can you make a list of emails you think are not spam and move them into my inbox? So I don't have to read through 34 different emails now. Through ChatGPT, using an MCP server of Gmail has the ability to go through all the different emails, sort through them, use the AI, and move all the emails into my inbox. So it even says, I won't move anything without your okay. And it makes a list for me, likely spam, not likely spam. And it even says, hey, do you want different rules? So I can say yes, and all of these emails are now being moved from my Gmail, from the spam folder to my inbox, without having to read any of them. So now I know I can go through these new emails and say, okay, these are the important ones I need to look at. I can even do a follow-up message and say, hey, can you summarize all 34 and put them in order from the ones I have to look at first? What do you prioritize and why? So 
I can have ChatGPT do a lot of the heavy lifting for me on Gmail now. And this only works well because I have a good understanding of AI and you can too. Thanks to Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. And Brilliant is an amazing platform if you want to learn all about AI. For example, if you want to learn about neural networks, which is really important for the world of AI, you can see interactive activities like this where you can actually see and learn and understand about neural networks. If we continue on, it is super, super interactive where I can actually control, where I'm not memorizing anything, I'm actually truly learning and understanding as I go through each lesson, where its whole purpose is to engage you in the topic that you're learning. Brilliant is an app and a website where it really gets you doing things rather than just reading. And if you go by Dale's learning cone of experience, it really sense that Brilliant would be a much better learning experience than if you were to just sit down and read through a textbook. So say you're going through an interactive demo, you're trying to understand it all, and you're like, hey, okay, I don't know the answer and you get it incorrect, you can actually hit see answer. So it gives you an explanation to take your understanding to the next level. I recommend their course on AI. It goes through everything you need to know from like a technical perspective and it brings you through these interactive activities where you really get to learn and understand the workings of AI. Brilliant really does help you become a better thinker and problem solver. And they offer thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and even AI. Learning a little bit each day is one of the most powerful things you can do for your personal and professional growth. Brilliant keeps you on track to reach your learning goals. To learn for free, go to brilliant.org slash Franklin AI or scan the QR code on screen or click on the link in the description below. Brilliant has given our viewers a 20% off annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything that is available on Brilliant. Now you signed up for Brilliant and you're becoming an expert on AI and many different subject areas, you can come back and you can go to apps and you can see all the different apps we have enabled, which we have access right away into our MCP server that is already connected to ChatGPT. So you can see the ones here. We can also go to Marketplace, like I showed you before, and we can just connect literally any of these. So you use Notion and you use Notes, you can connect it. You want to connect GitHub? Well, guess what? You can do it. You can literally connect anything. There's like 500 plus different things we can connect instantly. So say we want to enable Reddit inside of ChatGPT, we can do this really quickly now. So we can hit setup. It's going to give us a pop-up window to confirm access. And now while we're on this page, we can see all the different tools we have access to. So we can create a Reddit post or delete one. We can also retrieve posts from a subreddit, which could be pretty powerful. Now we can go on ChatGPT. We can say, hey, can you get the hot posts from the subreddit R ChatGPT? It's going to use Ruby and it's going to ask us again to confirm. We're going to put remember for this conversation and it is now able to surf through Reddit, which wasn't possible before we connected this MCP server to our ChatGPT. But where this is really cool, and you can see the results here that we're getting and the upvotes and we can see the post and everything. But where this is really cool is just by coming on Ruby, we can literally go to the marketplace, add in any app we want to our app list, connect it here. And once we connect it once to ChatGPT, it is connected forever. Say we want to connect Figma to beyond something than ChatGPT, we can hit the install button, we can select our platform. So say we pick Claude Desktop, we can say, hey, we're on the free plan or we're on the Pro Max plan. And it has a step-by-step -step installation guide that you can follow. So if you're on Cursor, there's a one-click button. It'll open up Cursor. It'll install for you. If you're on VS Code, same thing. You can one-click. It's going to enable MCP servers. And now you can open up a chat and access Ruby right on your VS Code. It works the same way for Claude Code. There's an MCP URL you can use. Or you can even start chatting with Ruby on WhatsApp and WhatsApp is going to use AI with your MCP servers that you have enabled. The fact you can connect this many MCP servers with ease makes it easily one of the best and most useful tools you can start using right now. And what makes this tool even more wild, you get access to a thousand requests per day completely free. Whether you're a developer and you want to use GitHub or a backend database like Supabase, or you want to use it for work and you want to connect Microsoft Teams or Google Meet, or possibly you want to use it for social media purposes with YouTube, Reddit, or Facebook. You can see the list. There's over 500 different MCP servers that you can quickly enable and access and start using right away in your live chat conversations to make your life that much easier. As always, love to know what you think. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. If it has helped you, consider subscribing. I cover AI on a daily basis. Don't forget to like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.